Today I'm going to show you how to produce Melodic House in the style of Marsh and other Anduna Deep artists. As usual, I'm using just the stock plugins in Ableton Live, and you can download this project file, all the samples and presets completely free. Now, why would you want to learn how to produce like other producers, right? That's just copying. Well, it's actually the fastest way that you can learn music production techniques and then apply them into your own music. So it's not about copying. The only faster way to improve at music production is with regular feedback and mentorship from professionals, which incidentally is something I offer with our eight week EDM production masterclass. Check it out below. So this is what we're covering today. We will be creating a lovely deep and Juna deep style beat. We will be creating large style marsh chords. And a bunch more tricks I've never shared anywhere else before to help you get that truly atmospheric deep sound. Don't forget, I've got plenty of other tutorials on this channel you can check out below. And you can follow me on Instagram too with at EDM Tips Official. That's the one. If you want tutorials like this each and every week, remember to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much, by the way. And hit that little notification bell to make sure you never miss a video. Anyway, without further ado, let's produce music like Marsh and Anjuna Deep and jump into the door and get it done. Okay, let's do it. Melodic house in the style of Marsh and other Anjuna Deep artists. So first I want to touch upon the vibe of Marsh's music. So it's very deep, it's very kind of classic Anjuna Deep style, a bit like Lane 8 and Ben Burma, so it all fits into that brand nicely. But there are a couple of things that make Marsh's music distinctive. So he quite often uses layers of old sounding break beats to give it a bit of an old school feel. He also uses some really airy vocals with lots of panning, lots of stereo width, and he also uses a lot of classic M1 organ sound for the bass line. And this is quite interesting because it's usually in house music rather than melodic house. Anyway, let's dig into it. First thing we're gonna do, set the right tempo. So we're gonna go 124 and we've got to name this bad boy. Marsh, what should we call it? Da -da 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 -da. Let's call it PT Bog. Yeah, PT Bog. And then we're gonna get started. So the first thing we need to do is find a nice kick. Now I'm gonna to go to my favorite selection. Got a nice melodic house kick I made. And there's a lot of sub and a lot of kind of high end tick and not that much in the boxy area in the middle. And you can see I've put my volume down to minus 10 so we don't get clipping on the master channel. We don't want that. Now, a lot of you guys asked me last week when I did my Stefan Botsin video, which you can check out below, uh, how I put this side chain track on. And I'm gonna show you how I do it. So you just create a new MIDI channel, load in some kind of sampler, here I've got the drum machine, the drum rack, sorry. Then I've loaded in a very short, sharp tick sample, which is just a rim shot. And then I programmed it in on every beat like this. Now what you do is open up this routing button here and make sure that it's set to sends only instead of master. And that means you won't ever hear that tick. But what it does is allow you to reference it when you're using sidechain compressors to allow you to duck the signal. And that gives you more control with the compressor rather than the longer kick, which will duck that sound for a particular amount of time. Anyway, it'll all become clearer soon. So we've got our nice deep kick. Next thing we want to do is get one of those break beats. As I said, he likes to use these old school breakbeat things. So I'm gonna use Splice today for this, but you could use Loop Cloud and you can download both of those things below, or you could download the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit, although we don't have any breakbeat stuff in there. So I'm gonna just put breakbeat in, and this is in Splice, and I'm gonna search for drums. So let's just go instrument, drums, and see what happens. In fact, I'm gonna search through my library, see if I've got any already downloaded. Perfect, it's like an old school jungle beat. So we're gonna use that, but we're gonna use it at the tempo of a progressive house track or a melodic house track. So that's 142, we can see here. So we just make sure it's warped to 142. We're gonna tighten it up a bit. We'll leave it in beats mode because it's the best algorithm for drums. And then we're going to just tighten up the beats. You can see they're not perfectly on the grid there. And we'll turn it down again because we're going to end up clipping. I like that. And it gives it a bit more texture. We're just going to use the first half like this. And what we're going to do is just use these snares as the main part. So everything else we're just going to turn right down, especially these big loud kicks. We don't want to turn them off completely because it's nice to have that slight atmosphere in there. Again, something very characteristic of Marsh's music. 
and we're going to tighten up this snare here. Just bring that over slightly. Now we'll leave that where it was. Okay, so let's just tighten these down a bit in terms of volume, take that volume down. So we're just using the bits we really want. Kind of the skippy snares, that's what we want, and we'll turn down the kicks. And we're just gonna loop that. Now we're gonna add some interesting auto panning, and I've noticed this is something that he does as well. So let's just turn this down a bit. Color it green, the natural color of drums, nice. Let me know if you're enjoying this so far, give me a hell yeah, or an amen brother if you're feeling holy. And I've got my tea, nice. Twinings, by the way. You can take the boy out of England, but you can't take the England out of the boy. Right, let's get this auto panning on the go. So I'm just gonna go and use the Ableton Live stock plugin as all of these. But we want this synchronized to the track. So I'm gonna turn it from arbitrary hertz to sync. Cool, and now what we want to do is add a little bit of room reverb to that to get it kind of gel into the mix. So if we go to my aux channels, you can see I've created this room reverb and it's just a normal reverb with a short decay time, boost up the volume a bit with the utility plugin, and then I'm just rolling off the low end so we don't get any mud in our mix. And let's just feed some of that breakbeat into it. Cool, okay, now we need a clap because that snare is a little bit weak, especially as it's panned, so let's get some clap clappy goodness in there. We're gonna go to, I'm gonna use loads of different sample packs today just for, just for interest sake. Let's go. We want something quite short and sharp and we can shorten it even more just by bringing this in, in a sampler and perhaps fading it out a bit sooner. Something really short and snappy. That's probably not the right sound but we can hot swap them out, that's fine. That one might work. Cool, and now I want to add some reverb to that. So if we open up this routing button and this return button here, you can see I've actually already set up two auxiliary channels within the drum rack. So if you right click, you can press create return chain and then you can assign uh, one of your global reverbs to this. And then when you close it back again, you can see we'll have the send control within the drum rack, which is amazing because then you can send a little bit of reverb onto each separate drum. Now let's get a nice hat in there as well. I'm gonna go to the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit, which you can download below. And we are gonna just look for some simple hi-hat. That one will do. Every other beat. But let's take it down in volume as well. So this is standard house stuff, guys. But it does create a nice deep vibe, just having a little bit of reverb on each. Okay, let's do it. What's next on my magic list? Next thing we are gonna do is the bass. We can come back to these drums and we will remember to stick around to the end because it's all gonna become clear. We're gonna go back and tweak some of this stuff as well. So let's create the bass. Now, as I said, you know, he quite often uses this M1 organ bass sound, which is usually used in old school house music and stuff like by MK. But what we're gonna do is use that within the melodic house genre. So I'm gonna go up to, and if you want to know more about all this stuff, you can check out my courses below. We go way in depth into all of this, but let's just go to samples. I'm gonna to go to bass and this is a good pack, this vengeance bass. There we go. So we got that organ sound, but we're gonna use it as a bass, which I think Stonebridge did first in Robin S. Show Me Love. Shout out to Stonebridge, been a while. Hopefully catch, you, catch up with you again soon. So here we go. Let's just 
you, we can hear that's the, the classic bass sound. So let's turn it down and decide on a key. I'm going to write this in C major. I've never written a track on this YouTube channel in C major. I usually choose a minor key, like A minor. But I'm going to choose major to give it a nice, happy feel. So if you just write in all the white notes from C up to C, you don't need to do this in Ableton 11, but in Ableton 10, you can use my template technique. And I've just copied that up and down an octave. And if you press fold, you've now got three octaves of the key of C major. And then you can just use that as a template to draw in the notes that you want to use. So let's work out what notes we want on this track. You can hear up there, it's supposed to be an organ but we're going to be using it as a bass. Let's get another octave in there as well, actually. Welcome to the circus. So you can hear, all I'm doing is using notes from within that key and it's going to sound cool. Uh, you have to remember to that's right, grab all of those notes and put them out to the side of the clip. Otherwise, you're going to hear them play like that and it sounds bloody awful. Lynn, stop getting Bond wrong. Let's move this over to the side and then you can see now you won't hear that play. We'll just hear the notes we've programmed in. So those are the notes we're going to use. Let's just extend them. Now we actually want to create a cool house uh, rhythm to that. So what we're going to do is select sixteenths on the grid, which is probably, and that's going to allow us to do the business. Technical term, um, yeah, where is it? There we go. That's probably eighths at the moment, but we'll switch to sixteenths if we need to. Yeah, we'll have to switch it to 16ths now to, whoops, wrong way. There we go. And we can actually have one there as well. And that just gives a little bit of skip and a little bit of momentum to the track. Great for house music. And let's just copy that pattern. down here as well. I'm just adding little flourishes. Let's do it like this. Actually, I want, I want this rhythm. Uh, so now let's tweak that bass a bit. It's a bit start-stop, so we're gonna tweak the attack to sustain release. Let's choose one voice because we don't want those bass notes overlapping each other when we increase the release. Increase the release, baby. Just add an extra one at the end. And then it's going to go back to the F. Now we want to create a sub bass line because we want to add reverb to this bass to give it more atmosphere. And if we have a sub bass, a separate sub bass, that allows us to have way more control over those mid bass. So sub bass, and let's use the operator as well. Again, I just want to use only the plugins from Ableton Live today. So let's knock that down a couple of octaves. So it's nice and subby. And let's just tweak the shape of this as well. Again, we need to make sure that we're only having one voice playing at once, otherwise you get a big wobbly mess. No one wants a big wobbly mess. Ain't nobody got time for that.
and you can hear a clicking sound as well. So what I'm going to do is just put an EQ8 and take out the high end to take out any of that click. Ooh, got loads to show you today. Cool. So now what we're going to do is take out the low end from our main bass so it's not clashing with our sub. And now we've got separate control over the volumes of the sub and the mid bass. So what I've done is create another auxiliary channel for the bass reverb. And again, it's a very short decay, but we want optimum control over this. So let's have a cup of tea, the best way to have optimum control. So let's feed some of this in. Whoops, not the sub bass, just the mid bass. So now we've got that bass with a reverb on it, which sounds lots cooler. Okay, let's carry on. Next thing, and what I would do then is group these together, by the way, and just have them in a bass group that I can control all as one, like so. Okay, next thing on the list is sub bass pad. Oh yeah, we've got to do the chords, haven't we? Well, we've kind of already worked out the bass notes of the chords, so we're just gonna use those um, for our pad as well. And we want to create something really airy and floaty in that marsh style. So I'll just color it cyan, the natural color of synths, and I'm gonna use the wavetable for this. Rather than building this sound from scratch, I'm just gonna see if I can find something that sounds kind of cool. We don't want anything that's got a chord because we want to create the chords ourselves. This one will do for now. So let's just drag that on and let's draw in those, those chords. Now the easiest way to do this is just to use the bass notes from the bass line. Pass, pass on writing pass. Uh, so we already know from looking here, we've got an F, we've got a G, we've got a D, then we've got an F again. So we'll use those. F. And I'll turn it down a bit. Steady on pad. Keep it down, son. There we go. Just consolidate so it's a longer, longer thing. I'm going to turn off fold just because you can use my template technique if you need, but it's going to be quicker for me not to do it every time. So now we've got the bass notes with our pad. Let's kind of fade that out a bit more. We want a bit more release on this sound. So it fades into the next note. I quite like that actually, if we leave that on the A. So now you can just build out your chords. If you're using the template technique, you can just skip a note each time, but we can see we're just using the white notes anyway. So we can pretty easily skip one white note and put it on the next to build our chords. So we'll start with normal chords, normal triads. So I'm just skipping a white note each time. Nice, kind of getting that vibe already. So let's just add a seventh note to these and see how it sounds. So I'm just gonna skip one more white note, put it on the next one up. Oh, heart melter, baby. Doesn't work on all the chords. Won't work on this one because then it's diminished. So we'll just use the octave here. Mm -hmm. 
I like that. That's really cool. And what we can do now is make this even more airy and spacey by adding some reverb. So I've created a second reverb and it's much like the room reverb except it's a hall so it's got a much longer decay time. Let's just add some of that to the pad. Okay, cool. Next thing we need to do is, well, let's ask the magic list, shall we? The magic list says gated synth. Oh, this is an absolute beauty. Uh, so what we're going to do is create another pad and we're going to add this really cool kind of jumpy uh, pattern to it. So never shout pattern, Will. Never shout pattern. So we're going to call this pattern pad. And we are going to create two MIDI channels here. One we are going to call trigger, and you'll find out very shortly why. And the other is the pad sound itself. Uh, so what I can do is just actually just duplicate this one, the MIDI, and then choose another pad that's going to complement the one that we already have. That sounds quite cool because there's lots of movement in it already. Let's see what that sounds like. That's mental. So we're going to turn down the reverb. We don't want any reverb on this yet. Turn down the distortion. That distortion is still too much. Let's see what's going on in here. Vinyl distortion. A little bit's cool. Right, now let's create this cool uh, gated effect. So what we need to do is actually draw in just a pattern of what we'd like those uh, gated sounds to be making. So if we go to just get a really simple sound operator, and then go, that's the pattern we want. So again, if you select 16th, you can just program it in. How do I know if it's 16th or not? By listening and looking. And it doesn't even matter which note you're hitting because we're gonna set this to sends only as well. Yeah, so this is 16th. So if we just duplicate that pattern across like this, now we're going to select, um, opening it up and selecting, instead of master, select sends only. And we're going to use this to trigger a gate on this pattern pad. So we can kind of make that small again. And we are going to select utilities, gate, and then open up this button here and choose sidechain from the trigger. And it's gonna turn this sound on and off to that pattern that we've already programmed in. Except we need to actually <laughs> activate it. Okay, I'm gonna tweak the trigger slightly by turning the sustain down. Yes, I accept this. That's cool. Yes, get in. Right, so let's just make that trigger small because we don't need it anymore. Make triggers small again. And then make sure that we EQ out the low end that's gonna clash with other stuff. Ah, oh, that's cool, yeah. There's more, a lot more to do to this, so let's crack on. Magic list, magic list, won't you give me the way to this? Now we are going to choose a vocal. Give this man more tea. I'm going to use splice again for this. 
And if you do want Splice, they're probably going to have a Black Friday deal. And if you use the link below, then I get a little affiliate commission, which is nice. Um, but obviously you don't have to. <laughs> right, so now let's go um, breakbeat. I've got some vocal I found. Yeah, okay, vocal. We're going to search by key. So it's C major, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And I've got these cool like female Latin a cappellas, orchestral. Uh, so we're going to use these and give it a really nice airy floaty feel, much like Marsh. And let's just drag them both in, actually. We've got that one, and then we are going to use this one as well. So we don't need to change the key. It's already in, this, in the right key. Lovely, jubbly. Uh, and let's have a listen. Like, that's really nice. It's a bit kind of pitchy. And, no, it's not pitchy, it just varies in volume a lot. So what we're gonna do is add some compression to this and get it all a similar volume. Gonna compress it quite hard. And it's just gonna be easier to work with. Uh, I'm just gonna send this to the same hall reverb. So it's already sounding quite nice. Uh, now, next thing we need to do is actually create a lot of movement and interest in this track. You know, that is something that Marsh is very good at. Lots of movement throughout the course of the entire track, lots of things coming in and out using filters and auto pans. So I'm gonna use, create a, a vocal atmosphere using this vocal. And that's so we've got a similar timbre in our sound palette. So let's just call that vocal. And then we're gonna call this vocal atmosphere or vocal texture. Whatever makes most sense to you. And I'm gonna put these in the usual pattern. So I usually have them after bass. Uh, no particular reason, that's just how I work. And now let's find a good bit to loop. I quite like this bit, so what I'm going to do is copy that, paste it, and then we're going to tweak it a bit. Again, I'm going to get the compressor on there so it's nice and even. And then let's tweak this slightly. Just by dragging these nodes over and getting... I just want the smoother sound. And let's listen to it in situ so it'll help us. That's cool. That's all I want. It's just that bit and it's going to loop over. but we need to make it a bit smoother. So we're gonna blend them together. We're just blending those clips together so there's a crossfade. Why didn't that one work? Let's zoom in a bit. Okay. Nope. We just copy that like so, and we are going to add reverb to the actual channel itself and some, well, loads of stuff. This is the cool bit that I'm gonna show you that I haven't showed you before. So we've got the compressor on there. Let's now make this really airy and move, give it loads of movement. So let's put a reverb on there. So it smoothed it off nicely. We're also gonna add some echo.
So you can hear it's already adding movement. But we need more than this. So what we're going to do is add a phaser. Let's go to audio effects, choose phaser. And phase the whole thing. But we're also going to add some LFO to that phaser. So it, it, it's got more movement. We might do it before the echo because that will create, it will mean the phased signal is then echoed. So the, the order of the plugins really, really matters. Let's boost that up. It's a bit quiet now. And let's add a little bit more movement by using uh, an auto filter. And again, we're going to program in the LFO. So it opens and closes it. We're going to choose a band pass filter and add some LFO. And that means this filter is basically doing this now using the LFO. We're going to choose spin mode, which is going to make the left and the right channels uh, at different speeds. Choose OSR. And that's just going to give a bit more drive to the, the filter. And now let's EQ out any harsh frequencies. Not four. Oh yeah, that sounds all right, actually, with that. Now we're going to use seven just to take out that harsh frequency up there. And we can compress this whole thing again as well. So it's again, more of a regular solid sound. Might do it before. And this is just a background atmosphere. So now let's listen to it. I might choose a different part of the vocal. So this is off. Let's turn off the pads for a sec. But we could choose a different part of the vocal and see if that sounds better. Just copy and paste it over our atmosphere bit. I think that might sound even better. Spacey. Now I want to add some more atmosphere. More atmosphere, I hear you say. Yes, Will, I did say more atmosphere. And what we're going to do is use a recording I took from Pai in northern Thailand many, many years ago. And we're going to just, it's like, it's a good idea if, you, if you've got a field recorder when you're traveling anywhere, when you go and visit somewhere, just when you're out for a walk. If you collect sounds and recordings, you've got, you, yeah, you've got original sounds that no one else is going to got have, so it's a good idea. So we're going to use these frogs here, like crickets and frogs. And this is just to add, again, in a similar style to Marsh, a bit more atmosphere in that high end. Just adds more interest. So let's take out the low end because there's rumble in this recording. And that's it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And now we can add that into the mix. Taxi.
We're almost there, in terms of the loop, anyway. In fact, I'm going to add one more filter to this. So as long as you understand what you're doing, you can add plugins in any order, but it's, you know, you have to understand what each one is doing. And if you want more information on that, then consider checking out my masterclass because we go into everything you need to know, basically. <laughs> and the reason I'm doing this is because now we can bring this vocal atmosphere in slowly. Like this over the course of one or two minutes. That's exactly the kind of movement we need to bring into a track like this. And if you want to check out more about track arrangement, you can see my last video, um, which was a few days ago. I've linked to it here as well. Now let's add more interest to those drums. We're gonna go back to those drums. I think we need a few more in there. So what I'm gonna do is go to my favorites again. I'll go to open hats. I'm going to use a classic 909 hat. This is a pretty dirty sample. It's actually sampled from a real one and it's pretty crunchy. So let's just take out those low frequencies. Make it a bit cleaner. That's enough. And it's just going to be for when the full groove is in. So let's just double that up. And now we need a groove as well. So I'm just gonna use a closed hat. Well, that one's pretty cool. It's kind of like a shaker. So for this, what I'm gonna do is put it on every, well, every other 16th, and that's gonna give it a shaky feel. And I'm also going to adjust the velocity slightly just to give it more movement. And if you do an odd number, like here, we've got five, and duplicate that, that movement in velocity is uneven, and it's regular, and it just adds more dynamic, organic interest to it. I think that's kind of clashing with the breakbeat a bit, so I'm gonna choose a different sound for that. So let's just duplicate this out a bit, do a little bit of arrangement and see if we can't make this sound a bit better. I might choose, uh, do a drum roll. I, I may be kind of going on a bit here, but I, you know what it's like guys, I get excited and then I just can't stop. So whatever, feel free to stick around. I'm really liking this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, I mean, that's all the bits and bobs. Oh, I could just add another lead in. That's something I could do, and I'm gonna build this from scratch, and then we'll get to the arrangement, okay. So I'm gonna go uh, lead, and I'm just gonna jam this on my keyboard. My nice keyboard that the blokes and ladies over at Arturia sent me. It's the Keylab 61, so I'm just gonna play with that. As I go, here we go. Let's turn it down a bit. I'm gonna hit that B, which is the seventh note in the scale of C major, and that adds just a lovely bit of tension, bit of heart melting goodness. Actually, as well, I'm going to add a an arpeggio or a motif because that would sound, yeah, that's something that 
old marshy boy does. So let's let's do that before the lead actually. More important, priorities guys, priorities. Let's get that motif in there. And I'm gonna do that. I'm doing everything with wavetable pretty much today. That's how I feel. Let me know if you're enjoying this guys. Let me know what you want to see me cover as well. Leave a comment below this video. Give me a hell yeah or an amen brother. If you're feeling holy, and let's just start this uh, motif off. I am ready for some motify goodness. Let's put it up an octave. And this is gonna be a really simple sound and it's just gonna help carry the track. 16ths again. That would be there probably. I'm just making this up, but it's just using the white notes from within the key of C major. So it's going to work either way. And it's just going to repeat over those changing chords. And let's change the shape of this. So let's get, I don't know. Let's see what these different saw waves, uh, wave shapes sound like. And another oscillator. That's cool. I like that. Let's add a little bit of delay to that. So we'll create a motif delay. Let's just choose a nice color that matches up with our color in the main track. And then I'm gonna use one of these echo plugins, uh, echo devices, which would be here. And we're just going to add some interesting ping pong delay to this. Not too much feedback. We don't want it cluttering up the mix. Let's unsync these so they're, oh, whoops, let's detach them from each other. Add a little bit of reverb. Take out the high end. And this is just another classic marshy floaty synth to have coming in at various points in the track. So let's just duplicate that too. Now for the lead, before we do the arrangement, let's just play with this. I want this to be a lot harsher and cut through the mix. So a couple of saw waves, let's detune them. Now let's make this sound actually good. <laughs> we want this to open up, so we need a filter to do that, to give it kind of a, a, a washy atmosphere. So we can assign envelope two to this frequency here, filter, by using the matrix. 
like so. And then we can change the shape to open it up over time, like that. Add some unison. Let's try monophonic with some glide. Okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's not really marshy, but I think it's gonna fit in well with this track. Let's take the volume right down because I want to add some grit to this sound. So what I'm gonna do is go to saturation and distortion, add some erosion. Add some overdrive as well. Make sure some of that low end energy is taken out, otherwise it's gonna clog our mix up. And then add some reverb too. Now I think that's gonna sit really nicely in the back of the mix, just at certain points in the track. So now let's do a little bit of arrangement. Say this is where everything comes in. Uh, no, let's have a drop here. We're gonna have one, two, three, four. Let's have a drop here that is just the kick and the bass uh, and maybe the vocal atmospheres. Take that out. Yep, take that out too. So now we're work now we're moving into some arrangement. And oh, I've got a good idea. Here we're going to switch the bass up to go up an octave. And this is a nice little trick and as we've got our bass separated out, this is where we can take the top bass up an octave and that's going to just take the level of the track up and that's going to be our main main sound there a kind of main bit so if we whack this on here this is going to be like a build up so we should probably find a snare actually I told you I'm getting carried away uh, so let's go to let's just find an, a nice normal snare like nothing too Maybe not exactly the right sound, but it'll do for now. So let's just get a sixteenth on there. Turn that down. Turn that down, boy. That's way too loud. So if we just copy him, we can change the sound afterwards. But what we're going to do is select them all, and we're going to change that velocity by holding Command and that is going to fade it in because the velocity is automatically assigned to the volume. And then everything com can come in here. Like this isn't ideal, obviously I'm kind of rushing this, but just to give some ideas about what you can do, Let's take the sub bass out of the bass line before the drop, obviously. So then we've got something to drop into, like so. So that's pretty much it guys. Um, yeah, obviously this needs a lot of work doing it to get it to sound just like Marsh, but I think I've illustrated some of the techniques you can use, and especially in terms of that movement in the stereo field and the fact that you need this stuff to be kind of developing throughout the track. So let's try another 
example, uh, before we call it a day, we'll just copy this these drums over here and uh, take these ones out. Take this out. Like the, we don't need this stuff in there yet. But this pad, again, is gonna be taken in over time using a filter. So let's just start here. So, you know, the track would start without the bass line in it, so it'd probably be more like this. And then we'll take these hats in slowly as well, like so, our shuffle hats. Uh, let's bring the motif. Oh, I've deleted all the motifs now anyway. But, you know, you need to be automating these things in and out throughout the track to create that lovely marsh-like movement. I hope you enjoyed that today, guys. It was a lot of fun for me. Don't forget, you can download the project file, all the samples and presets completely free. And remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell if you want tutorials like this each and every week. And if you want more in-depth coaching, if you want mentorship, if you want weekly feedback and access to me and my other coaches, to dive into the door together and get you to a professional level in the fastest possible way then check out my eight-week EDM production masterclass by clicking that link below this video. Until next time thank you so much for watching and cheers and happy producing.